Right, welcome back to my Vanguard portfolio update now for the month of March, and we'll go through everything in my pension and also my stocks and shares ISA. Now, firstly, as usual, just before we head into those numbers, let's have a quick review of what's been going on all in the world of the stock market at the moment. Now, as usual with the stock market, it hasn't failed to deliver, and I think it's been quite a wild month, let alone a wild week. Let's just have a look at a couple of the market indexes at the moment. So the S&P 500 at the moment, as you'll see on screen, is up a couple of percent so far year to date. Now, it's given up a lot of those gains that we saw just a few weeks ago and we had a pretty crazy start to the year which is quite nice compared to the roller coaster and pretty much downward trend that we saw in 2022. Now closer to home let's talk about the FTSE 100 quickly I'll bring this up on screen as you can see done not a huge amount it's not exactly as volatile as the tech sector over on the S&P 500. Now a couple of things to note of course we did hit those all new time highs of above 8,000 points on the FTSE 100 but now it's brought itself back down to life. Who knows after the budget this afternoon, things could change, but anyway, that's where things stand. Now, just on the budget happening later on this afternoon as I film this video, I think it's gonna be quite an interesting one. I think one of the biggest things for investors is gonna be around those pensions. So the lifetime pension allowance, the total amount you're allowed to have in your pension before things get very expensive and taxable, looks to be increasing from about a million quid to 1.5 to I think 1.8 is what most people are saying. And then also the increases in the amount that you can put in your pension looks to be increasing again from £40,000 to 60 or 80, if I'm not mistaken. One of the two numbers, I'll put that up on screen now, either as the budget has happened or what we're looking at at the moment just from the BBC website. Now, outside of the markets, the biggest news story of the week, and just this last weekend, I did a video about this one, is everything to do with Silicon Valley Bank. And it's spread over, of course, into the UK with their UK arm having been bought by HSBC for the lovely sum of just one pound, which secures just under seven billion pounds worth of depositors' money. So lots of companies had their money in Silicon Valley Bank UK, lots of startups and small VC-backed companies. Now, as you may know, this caused a huge ruckus over in the US with banking stocks falling all over the place. Place. Lots of recovery too over the past couple of days. If you were a bit of a swing trader on some of these interesting banks, you could have made some money there. But certainly government had to step in, FDIC had to step in, and it looks like things are stabilizing. But just generally on the market at the moment, things feel very, very jittery indeed. Any kind of good news or bad news and the market is up 5 or 10% and then down 5 or 10% just in the other direction. So hold on for dear life if you're investing in this market at the moment. Now, finally, before we jump into the portfolio, I think one last topic that we'll touch on at the moment is inflation, the hot topic that never seems to go away. We just saw yesterday new numbers come out from the US side, inflation staying around the 6% mark, which was expected. So the market didn't necessarily move one way or the other around those numbers. Anyway, with those inflation numbers coming out, many people in the US and certainly the commentators are out there are expecting the Fed to not raise their interest rates as aggressively because they're worried about crashing the rest of the market. So we'll see what happens there. Now, just on that inflation subject, I always like to go back to this reference point, Trueflation. It's quite a nice little dashboard and a website I like to use. And I'll put this up on screen now. As you can see from the US perspective, it's been going steadily down all the way to where it goes today. And right now they think that US inflation is around 4.56. So looking at the 6% just reported, this should suggest that when next numbers come out, we're going to be heading down to those kinds of numbers. Now, things look very different if you head over from a UK perspective and Trueflation also has a dashboard for the UK. Keen-eyed viewers will remember a couple of months ago now when I logged onto this website and our inflation numbers looked like they were around 20% compared to the reported 10% that we get out from the government. So I've just popped this one up on screen now. Now, as you can see, we are heading in the right direction. We are heading down, which again is quite good, not compared to the US, which was on a much steeper slope. Now it reckons at the moment we're at about 16% or so compared to where it peaked just under 20% just before the end of the year. Now that compares and contrasts to the government figures coming out of around 10%. And I think many people will resonate more with this when they look at their actual costs, whether that's their energy costs going up or actually the basket when they go out for grocery shopping. Anyway, at least things are going in the right direction, but we've still got a long way to go, certainly from a UK perspective. Anyway, let's dive in now to the Vanguard portfolio and we'll start with my self-invested personal pension. So let's quickly have a look at the pension. As you can see here, we're at 41,000, 88 pounds and 66p. Something I don't look at too often because I can't touch this for many, many, many years. Anyway, as most key eyed viewers will know, it's a very simple portfolio with the S&P 500 and then also a bit of emerging markets as well. As you can see at the moment, it is in the red because we have had some market declines. So if we go to the performance tab, which is always quite useful, I like to see this one and just go month by month. This really shows you the real kind of roller coaster that every investor has to go through and why you should really 
ignore most of the noise in the stock market. As you can see here, the lowest point was back in 2022 when we were down more than £2,000 in the account. But the key thing is, and lots of you keep bringing up in the comments, which is great, that ultimately as a long-term investor, years like 2022 are actually really good for your portfolio because if you're trying to accumulate shares and accumulate wealth, it's really good to get those lower costs. Now, if you're retiring or you're drawing down money, I understand it's a totally different scenario and I get it. And it's very challenging in that environment to try and work out where you should invest your money. In that instance, of course, make sure you are speaking to a qualified professional financial advisor because I'm not, I'm just an idiot on YouTube making videos in my studio slash spare bedroom. So don't pay attention to what I'm saying. Now, one thing I would say on this account, and this will be similar to my ISA as well, I've been giving this a lot of thought, trying to kind of consolidate and rationalize basically make my investing simple over the next couple of tax years, trying to keep things either in less places, so less accounts out there, and also making sure that most of my stuff is tax protected. One of the things I am thinking about, which is kind of bugging me and a little bit getting on my nerves, is having either a single fund or I may change what I'm invested in. As you can see at the moment, the S&P 500 fund is VUSA, which is an ETF. And as you know, this pays out dividends quarterly. And although dividends are great and you can reinvest them, the problem that you end up with is what I've got at the moment. So there's £43 worth of cash in the account, which you might think, okay, well, that's not much. Why is that not being reinvested? The problem is you have to buy a whole share worth of VUSA to get that money back reinvested. So I'm very tempted to do one of either two things. I'd love your feedback as always in the comment section. One, I may just consolidate both of these investments to the US equity fund, also from Vanguard which basically just has the entire US market on, or as a second alternative, and as lots of you say, and would be very wise to do so to cover a very globally diversified portfolio, is just have something like the FTSE All Share. Something really nice and simple um, that will just accumulate and automatically reinvest because it's a mutual fund, not an ETF. So I am tempted to do one of those two things rather than have to wait for new cash to come into the account to then be able to buy individual shares. I think that keeps things much simpler too. And yes, okay, it might be a couple of points of uh, extra cost, but we're not talking large costs like back in the old day with actively managed funds. So do let me know on that one, but that is certainly going through my head at the moment. Now, jumping over to my ISA, you'll see a very similar picture. So it's just a tiny bit in the red. Again, as most of you will know, this ISA was done from the last tax year and had just a couple of different deposits. One was a big lump sum, and then one was a smaller amount of money. So it's not really a surprise to see things where it is. As you can see, it's very similar to the SIP in terms of just makes up S&P 500 and emerging markets. This emerging markets fund is an ETF, not a mutual fund. That's because of my legacy import when I actually moved my SIP over from Hargreaves Lantern on the other one. Anyway, similar thoughts on this one again in terms of investments. Should I just consolidate things into a single fund? Probably and also future plans. So as you may know, a keen-eyed viewer and lots of you who are regular to the channel, I did a video recently explaining why I sold lots of my investments on my Hargreaves Lansdowne account, because for this year and the next tax year, I wanna consolidate as many things as possible into an ISA. So to quickly summarize that video, I've sold most of my shares in my Hargreaves Lansdowne account and taken 20,000 pounds of that and dumped it in a trading 212 stocks and shares ISA, which will take me up to this financial year. And then next financial year, come April the 6th, so just in a month's time or less than a month's time, I'll be starting a new ISA with Invest Engine. And with Invest Engine, I'll be using that new allowance to then build up a very simple ETF portfolio, which will probably just be a simple global ETF portfolio in that ISA. The reasons, both of them offer free ISAs, the fees and charges are really low. And on the Trading 212 side, that's where I can be a bit more active and have my stocks and shares that I want to pick. And of course, they've got fractional shares there as well. And then that way, it kind of limits my exposure to individual stocks and keeps that where I want it to be. And again, if you want some more information on that, then watch this video up on screen now, or I'll at least pop the, uh, the thumbnail that you need to look for if you want a bit more detail on that one. And I think it's really important to reiterate why I actually do these portfolio updates. What is interesting is if you're a relatively new investor or you haven't been in the market for very long, when you see these swings in your account and you think, oh my God, or I'm down £310 this month, or I'm down £500 this month from a £10,000 investment, it starts getting those, those brain juices going. You start thinking, is investing really for me? Is the market going to crash, etc.? But the longer you're in this game, you realise that this is all just part of being in the market. And actually, over the very, very long term, none of these short swings matter. But I think if we're in this together and we can share all of our thoughts rather than get lost in our heads and then decide that we want to sell everything, it's much better, I think, to be open and transparent about what you're doing. Also, I think there's lots of people on YouTube 
who will tell you what to do and tell you all the best things to do. But in reality, they're not doing it in the background or they're not sharing their portfolio transparently. And those two things can be very different because most of us deep down should know after we've been in the investing game for a long time that it is really about saving as much as we can, investing as much as we can into low cost index funds, if we're honest about it, and then doing that for a really long amount of time. However, we're all emotional. We all want to make money quickly and we all do little bits and bobs and little tweaks of that story. So just be careful. Anyway, let's just go into the performance tab now and you can see kind of how the portfolio changes month by month. Now, I'm not showing this to kind of say, look how good I am as an investor and see things go up in the green. I really wanted to show you the changes of month to month just to remind you that as an investor, even a long-term investor, you have to put up with these short-term changes if you want to make it out the other end alive. If anything, I don't really log onto this account very much. I do look onto my other investments a lot more, like the trading 212s and other shares I have, like on free trade, for example. But on this portfolio, I hardly look at it, to be honest, and it's probably some of the best advice you could ever get. If anything, turn off all the noise, it doesn't matter, and just focus on the long term. But I do think it's really good to share this information and to go through things month by month, not only to hold myself accountable, but I think if you're a new investor in this space, then you will see these changes and you won't be used to seeing these changes with the money in your account. Because investing is very different from just looking at your bank account where the money pretty much stays the same every month. Here, your money is at risk and capital is at risk when you're investing. And I know it can be daunting when you start and you're always gonna be checking it the first month you put your money in. I'm sure you're gonna be checking it every single day. So just to remind yourself that this is just the reality of investing and you have to put up with this and as the saying goes, you've got to put up with the rain if you want to get the rainbows. But in the long, long, long term, none of this will matter. But it's good to just get used to that up and down. And you will have some euphoric highs and you're going to have some very difficult times. We may have some great times ahead or we may have some very, very bad times ahead. But we do need to try and get through it together. If you are looking to start your own ISA or starting your own investing accounts, don't forget to check out Trading212 and Invest Engine links and other links in the description to get some free shares or some free money also to get yourself started. And then also look out for in the next week or two or a couple of weeks, who knows, I will be doing a best ISA video to wrap up everything we can talk about in 2023. So do keep an eye out for that one. I'm going to go through all the different platforms I've either used myself or might recommend. And then you can hopefully get yourself started as we go into the new financial tax year. Anyway, I'll leave you with the video up on screen now where I spoke about all of my plans of what I'm doing with my investments over the next couple of months. And also, if you've seen that one already, then you might want to check out the one I did on Silicon Valley Bank and everything happening over there. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. And as always, happy investing.